In a recent interview with Xbox lead Phil Spencer, he talks about if Halo Infinite's make or break for 343 Industries, his experience while playing Halo Infinite, the possibilities of a special edition console, and of course, when the release date for Halo Infinite will happen. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So recently, Phil Spencer went on to Podcast Unlocked, it's IGN's podcast to give you some good gaming information. It was a nice hour-long discussion talking about various parts about Xbox, but they did spend a good amount of time talking about Halo Infinite, so I wanted to share that information with you guys. So if you like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this, it greatly helps out the channel. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So throughout this video, we're going to be showcasing various clips from this podcast. If you want to skip to the part you want to listen to, well, check out the timestamps in this video. The first thing we're going to talk about is Halo Infinite being make or break for 343 Industries. As a lot of people are kind of feeling that way with Halo right now, where if 343 does not nail the release of Halo Infinite, it's kind of just like, I'm done. You know, you've had one chance, you had a second chance, third time, if it doesn't land, then I have to start looking somewhere else. But Phil Spencer does a really nice job of just kind of phrasing it properly where it doesn't sound like he's putting a whole lot of pressure on the company themselves of 343 to make a good Halo game because he recognizes that Halo is synonymous with Xbox and it's going to stay here for quite some time. I thought the multiplayer stuff looked fantastic. Such a great moment, but I never want to kind of put a team in a position where they feel like hey, this one's got to land or who knows. You know, I, I've heard the story of, well, you know, people even think about last holiday. Uh, what would have changed for us if we would have had last holiday? You know, you know maybe Game Pass would be, I guess, a, a little bit bigger. Would we have sold more consoles? No, because we're selling every console we can. That's not an excuse for not having it when we wanted. We said we wanted it then and it was a miss on our part um, that we didn't have Halo at the launch of the console. Absolutely true. Uh, and we are so focused on Halo this holiday and making it a game that our Halo fans will be proud of. That's the most important thing to us. But I, I'm not one of these kind of dire prediction people. I think game teams, whether it's our teams or any team out there, they put enough kind of pressure on themselves in delivering for customers. And when you're on a, a franchise that's as big as Halo with such focus um, on, on what's going to like on, on every step and every word that said, um, I trust the team, I trust the progress they're making, and I have confidence in Halo Infinite. Uh, and I, I think that's that's all that needs to be said there. I, I don't think it's a, a make or break. I, I just don't believe that. I, I, I think that um, there are gonna be a, millions of people that will play that game and love that game. And I'm sure there'll be some people that will see opportunities for us to do more. Um, and that's just the nature of being in the entertainment business. And we accept it. That's just the, the kind of what we've signed up to. And, and we love being part of that. Honestly, hearing that from the boss, Phil Spencer, it's actually rather reassuring. It just kind of lets you know that they're in it for the long haul for Halo. Like this isn't going to be like the end of Halo if Halo Infinite doesn't do well, which I don't expect it to not do. I expect it to actually do better than Halo 5 and have a solid player base. I think this is going to be a really good Halo game that people are going to like. But I guess this is kind of one of those reasons why it's great to be working with Microsoft and not EA. Though I do totally get that feeling, I kind of feel the same way as well, honestly, with Halo Infinite. Like, if 343 can't get Halo Infinite right, then, like, what are we doing with these guys? I mean, we've seen some management changes happen due to the delay of Halo Infinite, with Chris Lee being taken out, being replaced back with Pierre Hintz, as well as Joseph Staten. So there certainly were some consequences to that delay. And we do know that Halo Infinite's going to be, like, the console seller game, but the thing is that they mentioned here that they're already selling out all the consoles because the demand is so low because of the chip shortage, which we'll go into later in this video about special edition consoles, which might not be so great. Obviously, being the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer has had a chance to play a good amount of Halo Infinite, and he talks about his experience with the game right here. There was, you know, words out there, do we need a Battle Royale mode at launch, and we have to re kind of reimagine multiplayer, and... What I will say is when I got back to playing Arena, when I got back to playing Big Team Battle, with a lot of the innovations and evolutions that have happened in FPS multiplayer over the years, there was something very pure about coming back to a Halo Arena experience and how clean it was and how tight the gameplay loop was and just the, the causality and map layout and everything that I just love. 
So what it sounds like from Phil Spencer is that this game just feels like a really good Halo game and almost back to basics, but also taking in parts that from the evolution of FPS genre that we've seen over the past 10 years or something like that, that it seems like that's what Halo's kind of doing. It's at least going back to the basics of what makes Halo so great, yet also adapting to the modern style of games out there right now. That's why we have like things like Sprint and various other equipments come back as well within the game, like a grapple hook. So with this game being an evolution of Halo, while also being a return to basics, he was surprised. And it's one of the best parts about the Halo Infinite is that it feels like a true Halo experience. It's something that we all have been wanting for oh so long. Now this next bit of news might be a little saddening for you guys. I've seen it a ton of times in comment section and also on Twitter about asking about a special edition for Halo Infinite's console for the Xbox Series X. And within this podcast, they talk about just that, exactly. What if you had a Halo Infinite console? I'd really love that. Uh, but with chip shortage, uh, that could be an issue. Is that something you guys are considering or thinking about? Like maybe not having any or any special edition consoles just because of the limitations we have with tech right now? Um, I don't think we want to give up on our ability to do limited edition consoles and other things. Uh, I think that's that's part of the community and stuff that we want to build. I'm not announcing any of them today, uh, but I, I I do think there will be certain moments that are going to be special that we'll want to be able to, to celebrate. But I, at the same time, the, ship for, the chip shortage will be with us for a while, but that's kind of where we are. And it's frankly, at this point, it's not just chips. When we look at building these things, there's just such a shortage across so many things. We're looking at like ethernet ports and other things. It's just wow. crazy oh, right now. Um, all of the demand for consumer electronics, but we're working. I will say the company, Microsoft, very bullish. Uh, we're, we're putting in huge orders for Xbox consoles. We've seen demand for our console like we've never seen before. It sounds like a PR line, but in reality, the demand for Xbox has never been higher than it is right now. Uh, and the company wants to put it step forward and order the hardware to deliver on that demand. There's a lead time in hardware. It takes a little bit longer for it to get to the stores, uh, but the company and team Xbox obviously is really bullish. Uh, so we're, we're putting in those big orders and we wanna meet that demand because um, it's we don't like disappointing people, which I know we are for a lot of people right now. So it does sound like they have some plans for some special edition stuff, but probably right now with how limited things are that they just want to try to get these consoles out as soon as possible. Obviously having a more generic kind of basic looking Xbox probably sells a little bit more than a special edition one, but it doesn't sound like we'll have a special edition Halo console anytime soon. And lastly, they do go over a little bit about a release date for Halo Infinite. Because if you guys remember, pretty much every game from the Xbox showcase got a release date, even Starfield for next year, but Halo Infinite didn't? Well, we talked about this previously in a different video. It's still coming out this year. Can you shed any light on that? Like, what is the, uh, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you heard Joseph say in the talk track this holiday, uh, it, for us, we're, we know kind of our range in the three, four week range. We don't have yet the exact day. There's some other things with some other game timing that we're trying to look at. Um, we'll have better clarity over the summer, but this isn't okay. a month's thing. This is just down to a, a few weeks. Um, and so we're like, okay, instead of picking this date and having to move it by a week, which at this point would feel like a fail, like we don't want to do that. Let's wait until we're really solid on what the date is. But the team's very committed to holiday. Um, we feel good about that. Uh, and uh, the way that Pierre and Joseph are, are running the team, I, I feel good about you know the confidence we have in both quality and getting the game done. So just from that podcast alone, you can know that, that they're definitely focused on this holiday being a release date. If you hear anything about Halo Infinite being delayed until 2022, that's just straight clickbait. And within this podcast, Phil Spencer kind of reiterates what he mentioned previously, but a little bit better detail. Like the next thing for us is to say a day. Uh, and they're honestly like we're we're looking at glide paths of bugs and other things that the teams are actively actively working on. And when we make that call, oh, there's other teams that will move out of the way and stuff. When we make that call, so um, we're not quite there on the exact day. We feel really good about it coming this holiday. Obviously, Joseph said that on stage. Um, so this is just about us getting that exact day. You know, on the other side, I had Todd Howard calling his shot, like whatever it was, 16 months ahead of time with Starfield <laughs> State. Um, and but so I, I get the kind of the people, well, why is that one game have a date and this game doesn't? But we feel good uh, about what we are. And, and I think in the not too distant future, you'll hear more about a, a date. 
from us. Now, I covered this previously as well. So I think the main reason why we haven't heard a date yet is because I don't want to have Halo Infinite fall into a situation that Titanfall 2 did back in the day. Because what happened with Titanfall 2 is that it released like literally within like days between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And right in between like the three day, five day period was Titanfall 2 and a lot of people attribute that terrible release time for Titanfall 2's poor performance and pretty much killing of the franchise. And we still don't know any information about Call of Duty when that game is going to release. We do know Battlefield's release in October. So once I think Xbox understands where Call of Duty is going to land, we'll try to see where Halo Infinite can try to land in between those two games. For example, we're talking about the last Call of Duty game released on November 13th of 2020, which if it was going to have the same kind of thing that happened again with a Call of Duty game releasing around this time frame, well, that's two days before the 20th anniversary of Halo, which a lot of people are expecting to be the release date of the game on November 15th. And you can't release your Halo game like a day or two or after Call of Duty because no matter what game it is, it's going to sell for Call of Duty. So you need to space it out properly. But I guarantee you, as soon as we know more information about the release date of Halo Infinite, I guarantee you, I'll let you guys know on this channel as soon as possible. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the videos right here. I got a playlist that has all my news and informational videos right there. We've been uploading daily, so you might have missed something there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.